All right, so what I want to do now then is uh, to move this pouch db code into my existing Android project. So you should have a copy of your work from last month. It's my, my SDCE project. In the WW folder, let's edit the index file. My concept is I want to, from the home screen here, I've got a button that says About SDCE, and I want a brand new button that says My Classes. I want to save my classes and such. So I'll add a button here, which will then open a new screen. In that new screen, we're going to have those input boxes we just designed. And then we need to bring in the JavaScript. So we need to find where we've got About SDCE. That seems to be over on line 73. And that's where we've got our, our grid. So we'll, we'll want a brand new button uh, in the UI block B to take us over to my classes screen. So for a little time saver, I'm going to copy line 73 and paste it into 76. And that is actually going to go to a section we haven't created yet, which uh, we can call My Classes. So line 76, change that href to My Classes. It's still going to be a data roll button, data transition. I'm going to change this to slide up. It'll slide up from the bottom of the screen. Data icon, that one says info, but um, I think we've got one called check. This is me, this will be like a, a little check mark so that I can uh, add save my classes. We can look up uh, at jQueryMobile.com a more appropriate icon perhaps. But then uh, data icon, data inline true is good. And then the actual text there will be my classes. So this is a brand new button called my classes with a different type of animation slide up and pointing over to the section called my classes, which we will create at the end of our document. I want to save it and run it. I can just run it very quickly and it won't be really fully functional yet. I can run it quickly in Chrome just to see if it's looking okay. There it is. So that's what I'm kind of going for. Brand new button for my classes on the same front screen here. We will create a brand new section to display these input boxes. We'll add it at the end of the document. So let's just scroll all the way down to the bottom. Let's see. Uh, let's see. We've got a section, advanced PC classes screen. So on the new line 314, we'll create a new section. Classes section or screen. This is a section with a data role of page and the ID that we just added a moment ago, my classes. It needs a header. Data roll header. I want to be able to go back easily so we can add here the data dot uh, dash add dash back dash btn set to true. Gives us a simple back button. The text that will appear there, heading one, we'll call that my classes.
and then we need an actual article to display the main content. We will not add a footer. And that's a data role of content. At this point we can save it and run it. The only thing that should happen is we've got a brand new button on the home screen called My Classes. Click on that, we get a brand new screen that slides up into view, which is My Classes at the top with a simple back button, nothing in the main content area yet, but that's what's going to be filled with what we created on that pouch HTML file. So let's set ourselves up at this point and then we'll go on. So what it should look like is I've got my home screen, click my classes, slide up. I've got that, my classes, back. So that's all we've got so far. And inside of that screen we're going to do some copy and paste. So inside of that article, I'm going to go back to the pouch test file and we need to copy everything that's in the body of the HTML file. Um, I guess except for that learning pouch. So we'll copy the form down to slash form, oh, and also the div of the result. So back to your pouch file from form down to the div. Copy that and we'll paste that into the article, the data role content. So in this My Classes screen, I'm going to take what I just copied and paste it into the article. That worked, of course, a moment ago uh, in the plain old pouch file. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste it in, and let's see what it looks like. Since we've got jQuery Mobile, then we will get this instant upgrade that everything will look nicer. So My Classes, there we go, look at that. It's got those buttons. And it's got the fields, they look just like my app, instead of the basic HTML file. None of this works just yet, of course, because we don't have the JavaScript. Maybe we want to change these up a little bit so that they don't take up the whole space. We'll deal with that a little bit later. But this is what I've got so far. And I need to do something uh, very important uh, at this point before we go on. So uh, PouchDB, looking up their documentation somewhere there, they talk about integrating PouchDB with, uh, with PhoneGap or Cordova. They say that, the, that all of the code, that our code that currently works, we have to put it inside of the device-ready function. Remember in Codica Extra JS, we'll get to this in a moment, but we've got here device ready. The PouchDB documentation says any of your code, if you want to use it in an app, like an Android app, you have to put it in on device ready. So um, we will do that in a moment. But when that happens, that means that we will not be able to access these different um, functions 
that we've got here, such as updated cla update class, delete class, all of that, we won't be able to access it with onClick. OnClick worked in the in the learning pouch file because all of those functions were outside on the root level of the of the JavaScript, so to speak. Once we put all of these functions into on device ready now they're being defined and created and exist inside of a function so we can't access them directly just like we can easily do on click load name on click get name that won't work we have to do it slightly differently we have to use more uh, jQuery which is what we've seen like right here dollar what particular class or ID are we talking about, etc. We need to do it in that sort of way. So on click will no longer work. We'll have to use this, this syntax. So that means we need to change. We need to change this that we just copied and pasted. This on click will no longer work. So we'll just change those to the IDs, and then jQuery will be able to use them. So this that I copied from the pouch learning pouch file into my brand new uh, index file of my project, line 324, instead of it saying on click add classes, first of all change it to, it's not on click anymore, that won't work. Change it to ID, and because it's an ID, we don't add a function here, we just simply call it add classes. We'll do the same thing for this on click show classes, no, we'll change it to ID equals show classes ID without the parentheses. It's not going to be functions anymore. That, that won't work with what the way, the way we're trying to do it. And again, that's because we're going to put a function inside of a function. And in a sense, we can't reach into that function easily to access it. But if we use jQuery, we'll be able to, to do that. The only catch is we're not using on clicks anymore. We're using IDs. And while we're here, well, these buttons work, but they look really weird. So actually, uh, we'll spruce up this screen a little bit using, uh, using the jQuery mobile grid system to give us a grid, a, a cool little simple grid of three columns. And then we'll make these buttons uh, smaller so that they don't take up so much space. So let's, uh, now that we've got this inside of a, a J, uh, our jQuery mobile enabled project, now we can add some of this functionality of jQuery mobile. So we've got input, type button, value, add class. Um, it doesn't matter, but I like to keep the IDs at the end. And so what I'll do is before the end here of ID, we'll add uh, data-icon. Let's give this an icon. Add classes. And for adding a class, use again the check mark icon and we will add data dash inline true so that it doesn't take up the whole width of the screen to the reset button we can also add an icon data dash icon equals this one I'll say minus this is going to clear the um, or maybe actually we'll put, um, I think, cancel. Cancel is the one that puts the little X. So to clear the fields, because minus would make me think I'm going to remove a class. Now that doesn't quite work yet. So I think data icon cancel puts a little X. And uh, that one also I want data inline true so that it doesn't take up all the space. And then finally for the show classes, before the ID it doesn't really matter, but I'll put it there. Data icon, and this one I want to use star. I want to, I don't know, I want to see the classes. Any icon could work, of course, but here I'm using star and data inline true. So save and run that. Simply what I want to see, if it works, is that we've got the icons. I may be wrong with some of these names. And then that the icons are now in line instead of taking up all the space. It's still going to look a little weird. That's when we'll add the grid.
I want to see how that looks so far. Let's see, so save and run. We've got my classes, pops up, add class, clear, show. I guess it wasn't cancel. What's the little cross on jQuery mobile? Delete. That's what I was looking for. So it's uh, so line three twenty five is not data icon cancel. It's delete. That's the one that makes that little X cross out. So I, I get an X. And now what I want to do is put these into a grid so that they are nicely centered on my screen and a little more visually interesting. So let's back up line 324. We'll, we're going to build a, uh, a jQuery mobile grid. So we'll add a div here, slash div. Before the buttons, we've got div slash div, and this works by having a class of UI dash grid dash B in this case. And then the first column. second column and the third column. So we've got div class UI grid B, uh, first column, second column, third column, which is UI block A, block B, block C divs. So then it would, should make sense that we're going to cut and paste, or move the first button to the first block A, the second to the block B, and the third to the block C. So I'm building this grid to make this look a little nicer, and I've got the grid, so now I will select the first button and put it into A. Remember, you can drag and drop code. And now I've got a grid with three columns and each button in its own column. Save and uh, check that in Chrome and that should then have your elements a little bit better aligned.
So there's before the grid, and then here's <coughs> after the grid. Still needs a little work, but getting there. But in order for these uh, for these to work, add class and such, if I just copied and pasted my JavaScript code into my JavaScript file, it would not work. Uh, so this is this is what we need to set up in the HTML file, and the big difference is compared to our pouch test file is that it's no longer on click add class on click show classes their IDs so let's go back to our our pouch file and now we need to copy everything in the script section except the script tags uh, so that's a lot of code from line 8 to down 113 so copy everything in the script well, actually, before that, uh, let's copy the line 6. This will not work unless we've got pouch set up. So we'll need to copy the pouch JavaScript reference and the pouch JavaScript file into our project. So within the pouch test file, copy line 6, which is this, the reference to the script. And then in our index file, let's jump back to the top. And we can paste it just about anywhere, but let's put it... Uh, Let's say we'll put it I believe it has to work after Cordova. So line 32, paste that uh, paste that line uh, your Podge DB reference after your Cordova reference. Save that. And then we need to go to our learning pouch folder and copy the JS file into our Android project folder. So in this learning pouch project we've only got pouch test HTML and pouch DB JavaScript. Copy your JavaScript file, your JavaScript library of pouch, copy that, and then into your WW folder of the my SDCE project, paste it. So all of this that worked about that, uh, adding pouch DB and such, worked because we have this JavaScript file, this library of JavaScript, of pouch DB JavaScript commands. So this will not work at all. We don't have that, so make sure you copy that pouch DB into the project of my SDCE. While you're here, you also want to open in Notepad the Kodika JavaScript file. If you want to right click edit with Notepad, kodika.extra.js. Okay, so then we can go to pouch HTML, and now we can copy the script to make pouch DB work. Copy lines 8 to 113. Don't copy those script tags. We don't need them in a JavaScript file. We only need those script tags when we're in an HTML file to, dis to, to mark that this is JavaScript. When we're in a .js file, we're in a JavaScript file, so we don't need to add those script tags. So copy all of that code that made this work. We'll go to our Kodika Extra file, and as I said, the documentation of Pouch says, in order for this to work, it's got to be inside of on-device-ready. It has to work after our device is ready. So we've got the event listener waiting for the device to be ready. Once it's ready, run the callback function on device ready, which is right here. And now we can do a bunch of stuff like hide the navigator or hide the splash screen. So we'll say after hide splash screen, give yourself some space there and paste. So we're taking all of those 100 and whatever lines and pasting them all into 
the on device ready. At this point, it still won't quite work. Uh, we, needed, we need to do three big things. On the index, we needed to change our references from on click. We needed to change those into IDs, number one. Number two, all of this PouchDB code must be in our onDeviceReady function, which it now is. And now number three is, well, we need to trigger these functions, update class and such, we still need to trigger them, but we have no longer on click. So we'll be using jQuery to trigger these functions. So within, still within the function of on device ready, we're going to add some jQuery. We're going to add some jQuery to accomplish that. So on my line 113, oh, it seemed to match up. That's funny. 113. Uh, on my line 113 of the Kodika file, after the end of update class function, still inside of the function of on device ready. Make sure you're still inside. Press enter. And now we'll use some jQuery to trigger those, those, those clicks to run these functions. So our syntax will be dollar, open close parentheses, dot click open close parentheses semicolon this is our syntax now instead of attaching on click to the actual visual elements in the HTML file we have to do it this way via jQuery mobile so um, we were basically saying something is going to get clicked and something will happen the something is the ID so inside of these uh, inside of this parentheses we'll do quotes pound symbol and then we called we called it add class right we called it add classes pound add classes we're saying the element on screen called pound add classes which is an id add classes once it's clicked do the following the following then is that we're going to run the add classes function I'm going to trigger it. So the way it works is inside of click function space uh, open close parentheses space open close curly brace and inside the curly brace the add classes function. It's just confirming that I called it add classes. Yes, add classes. So this line here is taking over for on click. It's obviously more, more, uh, more code than before, but this this works because now we've got a function inside of a function. Add classes function is inside of on device function, so we can't access it directly through on click. But Java, but jQuery mobile, the jQuery can. We just have to use this sort of syntax. So this exact same line, you can copy it and paste it on the next line and then update it or change it for the other one. We had add classes and show classes. Let me check my names, of course. Uh, show classes, yes. Add classes, show classes. Now that we've got this in our uh, Cordova project, we will not be able to test a lot of its functionality by simply going to the to the um, to Chrome because we've got this on device ready. On device ready doesn't fire until we've got a device that is ready. If we test it in Chrome, it's not a device. So now, if we want to see if this fully works, we need to open up Node command prompt and run uh, 
run it in a device or a, or a virtual device. So I'm going to run it in my real device. code so far if you want to keep seeing it. But uh, now is the time that I have to wait for my computer to do that. Uh, you should try it now on your real or virtual device. Let's see if it works so far. We needed to rewrite our code a bit in order for this to work. This is the way it had to be. It worked fine previously as a web app, as a website, but now if we want this to be a a mobile app, we have to take on device ready into account. And then we have to rewrite our code a bit like this using jQuery to trigger these button clicks. Now, as I'm waiting for this to load up, the, uh, the documentation of Pouch also mentions um, that Pouch actually just came up. So let me show you. OK, let's see. So that's my device right now. There's my classes, loads up, need to deal with that, looks a little weird. Um, I'm going to add a class. So on my device it did add the class. All of this popped up just like I'm expecting. another class. Got a couple of classes there. So should should be working. Hopefully I am running that off of my real device here. And it's working as I'm expecting so far that I'm adding I'm able to add classes. Delete class and update class? That doesn't work yet. I haven't gotten to that. But at least this works for me. Did this also work for anyone else? Anyone that you got it to work? Okay, good. So I'm, uh, I'm adding these classes. This delete and stuff doesn't work yet because it's still using the concept bef from before of on click. So if I try to delete class one, two, three, it doesn't understand. So we need to update our code. to address that. Remember the index file, we changed it from on click add classes. And we've got that happening in the JavaScript. If we back up to line 67 and 68, 
This is where we're showing the delete CRN. We've got button, on, click, delete classes. And then we've got to update the classes, button, on, click, update class. So that on click is not going to cut it anymore again. So we're, we're going to need to change that again the same, the same way. Change those IDs, change those uh, on clicks over to IDs. So this is line uh, 67. Find where it says button on click equals delete class, and instead it'll say button ID equals, and don't forget to remove the parentheses. The parentheses means it's a function, but no, it's not a function anymore, it's an ID. I guess what I did was I created my table and I have a delete classes uh, uh, function call so I have to do the ID yeah. and the that would delete each work. There is there there is a way to do it. I would have to look it up, but definitely see these these issues that we're running into here. That idea that you've got is a really good idea, but then we run into that problem right here because we can't pass it because it's no longer a function. So it is doable through other ways. You can definitely look it up, but we'll still be able to implement what you're doing just slightly differently. So I'm gonna change that one. Update class now is also an ID. So now those are IDs, and then we need to do the, the jQuery uh, method of, of activating these functions. So we'll scroll back down to line 113-ish. And this won't work exactly the same, because these, these work because the add class and show class buttons existed the moment that the app launched. But these other two buttons don't exist until we click Show Classes or we add a class. The button for Delete CRN and Update Class, those don't exist until the, sh the Add Class or Show Class. Therefore, this kind of jQuery won't quite work. Uh, we're going to add a slightly different version and then it'll work. So, next line. It's going to start on the same sort of um, syntax. We've got dollar, open, close, parentheses. This one's instead going to be on, simply on, open, close, parentheses, semicolon. So the syntax will be different here. What we're paying attention to in quotes here is body. We're paying attention to the whole document, the whole uh, the whole screen, the whole body. Specifically, when we click a certain button, the delete button. So furthermore, inside of on, in quotes, we'll say click. When there's a click on the body, do the following. But wait a minute, that would mean that anything you click on the body would trigger this function. So we have to specify a little bit more. Okay, anywhere that we click on the body, but specifically on the delete CRN ID. So we've got comma, in quotes, the ID that we defined up here, which was uh, delete classes. So now we're specific. Now we're saying that um, we're gonna wait. We're gonna try to detect a click on the body, but specifically tied to the delete classes ID, which which we have on screen. And then we can add uh, comma. One more thing: the function again, just like on the line above. Function open close parentheses is an anonymous function. Open close curly braces. And inside of the add classes, uh, inside of the curly braces, we have delete classes um, 
parentheses. So we might be able to still pass your, your values in this way because we are ultimately still using the original function call. In pretty much the exact same way for the update class. So I'm just going to copy that whole line, paste on the next line. It's still going to be body. We're still going to be waiting for a click on the body, but then we've got the update class. <coughs> Thank you. Update class. And that calls the update class function. Save that, and uh, at this point, to see if it works, I have to run it in my device. So I'll go ahead and do that. While it's updating, I'll also mention something. Uh, so the documentation of PouchDB um, says that this works, uh, that the PouchDB works on any, uh, it lists a bunch of web browsers and devices. And it lists that on Android, you need 4.0 and up. So if you've got an Android 2.1 or whatever like I've got over here, it won't work unless you add a little bit more. The, the PouchDB tells you, well, now you're going to need to add the HTML5 shim, and then it'll work, and all of that. So uh, this is going to work on devices that are Android 4.0 and up. And our device, um, our config XML file, is set that our app is compatible with Android devices I think 2.3 and up. So we have a little, a little issue here. Our, our app itself is compatible with devices from 2.3 up to 5. Point whatever. But Pouch itself is not automatically compatible uh, on devices of 2x and 3x, just 4x and up. So what we're going to do after I confirm this works, we're then going to check using Cordova, we're going to have it check what device is this uh, app running on? Is it running on 4.0 and higher? Great! Activate PouchDB functionality. If it's not running uh, on, on Android 4.0 and, and then up, okay, then don't show the ability or don't have the ability to save classes because Pouch won't work. Obviously, if I go back to PouchDB.com and read the whole article on how to make this work on older devices, that might be better. But I'm going to show you here then, well, let's detect a device version, Android version, and then we can we can do things about that. Show or hide content that is not compatible with certain devices. This loaded up on my device now, so let me inspect it. My classes, I can show classes because it should have already saved some classes, which it did. So that's the whole point. These classes are permanently saved on this device. Uh, let's say then uh, I want to delete class 1, 2, 3. There it is, deleted class 1, 2, 3. Uh, let's say I want to update a class. Two, 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 and that's class Android. Campos update class and updated. So it's the functionality that we had on the last hour on the, on, the, on the HTML only project. Now we've got it in our app. 
we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break, uh, which is, okay, well, it, it won't work in all devices, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, let's see about adding some, uh, some checks using Cordova. What device version are you using? If you're using the wrong version, then disable some features. So that's one way to go about it. So if you want to do it that way, that's what we're, we're going to do next. Then we'll take a break. Um, we'll go back to our JavaScript. And this is something that we need to check early on. So we will do it uh, early on on the device ready function. It doesn't, doesn't behoove us to have all of this try to work before we even have the ability to to, to use it if we're on the wrong device. Let's back up to the top. Let's say I want this to happen pretty early on. Um, so we've got this splash screen that that is 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 displayed until the device is ready to go. So we're going to do this before the splash screen. Give yourself some new space before the splash screen there. We're going to create a variable called Android ver, Android version, that will be populated with device dot version. This is um, this is Cordova. One of the plugins is to check features of the device. Uh, we can check its version of Android, we can check its um, type of network that it's currently connected to, we can check um, the version of, uh, of Cordova that we have available, we can check the, the unique identifier of that device. What I want to do here is check, okay, what's the version that we're getting? What is the version number that we're getting reported from the device? And it's going to give it to us in a way that um, we then need to convert uh, so that it makes sense to do an if-else check. So on the next line, we'll say, we'll create another variable, and this one will be called uh, Android uh, version, Android ver int, as an integer, because technically it's going to give it to us as a string, as words instead of numbers, and I want to check, is our Android version higher or lower than a number, not a, not a string, not a word? So we're going to convert this equals. And we've got a built-in JavaScript method called parse int. Open close parentheses. This will parse an integer. It'll take some input, and if it's number-like, it will then turn it into an actual number uh, on base 10, for example. And then we're going to store that. And then we can do a simple if-else check. So inside of parse int, we're going to say, okay, deal with the with, deal with with the value of Android ver, comma ten as base ten, as as plain old base ten numbers. So we're taking whatever that was. It might have been Android four point three. Technically, it's the word four point three. I want it to be the number four point three. So I can check that on the next line, if. If I've got a particular version of Android, then then great. Um, then we then we have the ability to use PouchDB. If we have if we don't have that version number, then don't give the user the ability to, to have pouch DB. So the, our if that we're going to check here is if Android ver int greater than equal to 4. So notice we're saying whatever the device is reporting, if it's greater than or equal to. We don't just want to say greater than 4 because then that would exclude 4. Greater than or equal to. The only thing that we'll have here is a console log output. We'll say pouch db is available. On the else, then it would fail that it's under 4. So first we'll say a console output. Pouch 
couch TV is not available. And more meaningfully, we will hide the ability for people to to click on that um, my classes button. So we'll say uh, we'll say furthermore here. Uh, this is jQuery. So um, in quotes. Which particular button are we talking about? We haven't added an ID to it yet. So we'll add it here. We'll reference it here, and then we'll add it in the HTML file. But uh, we're going to have the my classes BTN. That button that's on the home screen that allows a person to save their classes. Uh, we're referencing it. We, we haven't put the ID onto it yet, but um, we're going to. And then specifically, once we've referenced that button, we'll say dot .hide. And that's some, uh, some jQuery there. So that's basically doing display uh, style sheet, uh, some style of uh, display none. We're hiding that button if we don't have version 4 or higher of um, of Android. So in order for this to work, we need to go back to our HTML file and add the ID of my classes BTN to that button. So just check this code one more time here. And then we'll go back to the HTML file and add that. Android ver Android ver int. my classes. So back on line 77 where we created the button of my classes, we've got all of these properties um, but no ID. So uh, right after data inline true ID my classes without the without the pound symbol. This is line 77. So now we've got. So now this uh, element has an ID, and therefore we can hide it once we perform that check. That check is going to happen while our, scl our splash screen is visible, so the user should never should never see this if they have the wrong device. And I'm going to save all, and then run it in my emulator or uh, my device. So what we'll do also while that's running is uh, let's let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll do a little bit of uh, maybe fixing up the the look of this thing. This this table's kind of it works, but it doesn't look that good. So let's take a ten minute break. We'll be back at eight thirty, no eight forty, and then we'll make the table look a little nicer.